It's blazing hot out here, and we've turned off the air conditioning to bring you Lux and Ember. And this is our thoughts on Steven Universe, Season 5, Episodes 1 through 4. Holy dang, things pick up at the start of this season. Oh yeah, Steven going back to Homeworld to go on trial for the crimes that his mother supposedly committed, and Lars getting stuck, and oh my god, Lars. Yeah. Also, that trial brought up so many questions, and even though some people are probably thinking, yeah, Yellow Diamond is the one who destroyed Pink Diamond, I don't actually think it was Yellow Diamond. I think it was White Diamond, but Yellow Diamond is very close to White Diamond, and she knows what happened. But Yellow Diamond is predominantly in charge of the military structure. If Pink Diamond was being protected by militant gems, even if they were assigned to Pink Diamond. Hmm, I just got an idea that struck me. Maybe Pink Diamond and Rose Quartz weren't against each other. Maybe they were at one point, but then Rose started to sway Pink Diamond. And so, of course, then Pink Diamond would have to be shattered because she was going against the other diamonds. Mm hmm. But my question here is why does Garnet believe that Rose Quartz shattered Pink Diamond? Because I bet you. Rose Quartz took that on as a defense mechanism to put all the hate and focus on her and not the other diamonds. Just like how selfless Steven is when he sacrifices himself to save everyone else. Yes, but if the diamonds were busy infighting with each other, they probably would have left Earth alone. By being responsible for shattering a diamond and residing on Earth, it makes Earth forever a target, as long as Rose Quartz exists. Hmm, I love your counterpoints. They really make me think. Think, think, think. Just imagine me tapping my forehead there and you get the reference. Yes. Wow. Just Rebecca Sugar is just so good at putting twists in there that aren't like M. Night Shyamalan's where, oh, yeah, you've just ruined everything for me. No, it makes us so you can go back and watch the series and enjoy it even more. And go, okay, were there hints to this? In light of this information, would I view these previous episodes in a different way? And if you're wondering why we're not going episode by episode, it's because realistically all these episodes were like one big episode. Because it was basically a single arc. They were on the ship, on the way to Homeworld, trying to escape, then you had the trial, the escape from the trial, and the partial return to Earth. If you stitch it together, it's all just one long episode. Mm-hmm. And... But to go over some small details, I like how Steven and Lars almost got away on the ship. Yes, because of that overall ability to connect with other people. Especially fusions. Fusions are so looked down upon in gym society. Which is so ridiculous. I understand a cross-type fusion, like Garnet, but you're fusing two topazes together. The ruby guards that the ruby of Garnet was a part of fused that way specifically as a defense mechanism to, you know, form a bigger, stronger. And that ruby who became part of Garnet when she was talking with Sapphire about the difference in fusing with the other rubies as opposed to fusing with Sapphire, when Ruby said that when fusing with the other rubies still felt like herself only bigger, that true change came about when it was a cross-gem fusion. Yeah, I think they see mutual fusions, you know, the same gem, as utilities, as a tool. But when they see cross fusions, they don't think that's useful because you're not increasing the utility of that particular gem, to them anyways. And considering how structured gem hierarchy is, I mean, we had a whole song about it last season, that every gem has a purpose. By cross fusing, you deviate from that stated purpose. But they seem to be also at this point well, at least based on Aquamarine, looking down on the same type fusions. I think they've always looked down on them. They just look down on them less because they still have utility. And the moment they start losing that utility is when they really start looking down on them. Like the fact that Topaz broke the rules is making her less useful. Also that she prefers being fused. That she would rather be together with the other Topaz than being separated. Because she says that, that, you know, she's always being separated and she doesn't want to be and she acts like it's no big deal. 
because of what the reaction would be. And they were so close to getting away. Because Topaz still could have destabilized Aquamarine and driven the entire ship back. Because Topaz could have stayed on Earth as a fusion. But then we wouldn't have gotten the rest of the episodes. And the threat of being separated from Topaz forever was enough to stop the fused Topaz. Even though she had the upper hand in that moment, she didn't see a way to escape from the homeworld structure. She wasn't thinking about escaping to Earth, and there wasn't enough time for Steven to say it. And would that have even been worth it to Topaz, to leave behind everything she knows in order to stay together as the fused Topaz, when she could stay on Homeworld and still have some time as the fused Topaz? And something really interesting, especially when we got to the off-color gems, I don't think they've been fused long, some of the fusions, because of the way they look. At least that one fusion, I don't think they've been fused long, or they haven't defused and refused back together or ever been poofed. Because you compare when Gauntlet first fused to that fusion we saw with the off-color gems, you see what's going on and why they're off-color. But if you look at Garnet now, her colors are more solid, they're more together, they're more coherent compared to the off-color gem back on Homeworld. Yes, and that one, six-way fusion, that's pretty intense. Also, I love the way her voice was. Reminded me of, oh, I can't remember the name now, the giant turtle from Never Ending Story in the Swamps of Sadness. Hmm. Just that very slow, methodical speaking. So I think at least that one hasn't ever defused. I think each new gem that was added joined the existing fusion mm -hmm. rather than them all separating and getting back together. And I don't think they've ever been poofed too. I think it's a real key for any of these fusions here. They've never been poofed and had to reform and refuse with each other. Yeah, but I'm saying you can defuse voluntarily. We've seen that. And you automatically defuse when you're poofed, because we saw that with Garnet. Mm -hmm. And I love the way the writers showed us where Lion came from. How Lion became Lion. Yes, because in the story reading that we had, where Connie and Stephen were going through the journal, in those fantasy flashbacks that they made up, none of the lions were pink. And Lion is very definitely pink. Also very long-lived, like a gem. But he's not a gem. He's an earth creature. But he's pink. Hmm. It may have been the first thing that gave Rose the idea for a human-slash-gem hybrid because of what happened to Lion probably quite a while ago. She's probably had Lion for a while. Well, she had to, considering that none of the remaining modern crystal gems were familiar with Lion. So... She had to have connected with Lion far before she was connected with the other crystal gems. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Lars isn't a zombie, but he would probably be more akin to a vampire. Except not needing to actually drink blood or observe souls or any other tropes that will go along with vampires. Yeah, it's... Not so much that he's a reanimated corpse, because a reanimated corpse still deteriorates. Mm-hmm. It's more that he's no longer having to derive power from consuming food. Because the crystal gems don't have to eat. They get all the power and nourishment that they need from their gems. Which is why the kindergartens take so much resources. Because they have to power the gems for the entirety of their existence. Yeah. So Lars is now getting all of his power from the gem energy that Steven managed to transfer with his tears. And you can see why they started going to other planets. Because that kindergarten is a long forgotten place. And the, probably the entire core of this planet is like that. Holes everywhere. Resources completely used up. So if the diamonds continued to want to have gems to serve them, they would have to use the resources of other planets. And obviously the diamonds want more and more people to serve them. Though, if the other gems come from kindergartens, where did the diamonds come from? 
that is something I would love to know because if you look at them, they're at such a higher order than the other gems. And not just because diamonds are the top on the hardness scale and are considered the absolute top, the rarest, the most desirable. They're not super rare. Thank you, diamond industry. Alexandrite is actually way rarer. Who is Alexandrite? I know we had a gem named Alexandrite in the series recently. I'm pretty sure it was that one that Stephen had to rebubble. Or was that no, that was Bismuth. That was, a, yeah, thank you. I'm curious where we had Alexandrite, or a name like that has been mentioned somewhere. Yeah, so in terms of actual scarcity on Earth, I believe Alexandrite is much rarer. Google it. It used to be June's birthstone. Hmm. I remember you talking to me about that. Mm-hmm. And now it's Pearl, which is easier to find because, as we've said in previous Steven Universe recordings, it's not actually a gem. It's mm -hmm. made of organic material. And speaking of Pearl, that was great on the last episode. What are we going to do? Oh my god, this is horrible. How are we going to get Steven back? Hi, Steven. Oh my god. Wait. That was an awesome moment. And the, the fact that you see everyone was looking for Steven. It wasn't just the gems. It wasn't even just the gems and Connie. Greg went along too, even though Greg has no training and no ability in terms of combat. Mm -hmm. You had actually heard them talking about the broken ship too. They're going to never be able to repair this in time. What are they doing with Steven? Hi, Steven. Oh my God. Oh, okay. Yeah. My, my only thing when he got back through Lion, leave a note. The gems can read human handwriting. Mm -hmm. And there's also Connie and his dad. If the gems couldn't have read it. Connie and Greg could have. Mm -hmm. Or he could have drawn pictures. He did that with the partially healed centipede gem because he couldn't read gem handwriting. Mm. Uh, let's see. Ooh, I just thought of another reason that Pink Diamond may have been starting to revolt against the other diamonds. The thing the rest of them did, the uh, thing that corrupts gems. Maybe that was in the works. And she said, no, why are you going to do that? Because they didn't activate until after she was shattered. And maybe this is the actual reason that Pink Diamond had the human zoo. To protect some of the humans in case Earth was destroyed. Hmm, maybe Pink Diamond was against them the entire time. But Pink Diamond and Blue Diamond were so close. Yeah, I'm just thinking that maybe Pink Diamond always or started to dislike what they were doing to other planets. Because she was the one who went there first. Because it's not like Pink Diamond was the one who went out, found new planets, conquered the planet turned it into a kindergarten, and then moved on. But Earth did belong to Pink Diamond, but it sounds like Blue Diamond also had some stuff to do with colonization development. And we know Yellow Diamond does because she's the one who changed Earth into a geoweapon with trying to do the cluster. I'm just trying to think that my brain keeps going, hmm, I'm starting to think Pink Diamond started not liking what was going on for all planets, and Earth was the last stop. It's like, yeah, yeah, this planet's beautiful. We shouldn't ruin it by doing what we're doing to it. Which is really interesting because this whole time, we as an audience have been looking at the diamonds specifically as our ultimate enemies. That if it wasn't for the diamonds, we could all just live in peace. I'm thinking it's one or two particular diamonds. Yes, yellow and the mysterious white. Mm -hmm. And the reason that yellow diamond keeps trying to pull blue diamond out of her funk if Yellow Diamond does know that Pink Diamond was not shattered by Rose Quartz, she might be trying to save Blue Diamond from the same fate. Mm. That pose when they first come into the trial where Blue Diamond is resting her head on Yellow Diamond's shoulder and the fanfiction exploded again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so many things are starting to pop into my head now as we talk about this. Wow. Good job, Rebecca Sugar. I can see why... You could be like at the end of the season going, I don't know where to go. I don't think she's written herself into a corner or anything. It's just she's out of ideas. <laughs> yeah, I think it's more that she has writer's block than anything else. That and I heard at one point she was put in charge of Adventure Time. So that may have been taking some of her mind away from working on Steven Universe. Yes, because sometimes being split over multiple projects can be helpful, but other times it can be draining. Mm hmm that or you just get so focused on that other project that you don't come up with any more ideas for the other project until much later. So yeah, and then going back to the trial, oh my goodness, the Zircon. <laughs> yeah, and you actually had to point that out to me. It's like, 
You said something about the names. What's important about their names? Fake diamonds. Oh! Well, specifically, cubic zirconia is a fake diamond. I'm not entirely 100% that zircon... Zircon may actually be a legitimate gem, but when I hear it, all I think is cubic zirconia, which is fake diamonds. Hmm. And if that's the case, ha, lawyers. Ha, ha. <laughs> Uh, nice. And the blue zircon's realization of, you don't know how it happened. Not that Stephen doesn't know how it happened because he's not actually Rose Quartz, but you don't actually know how it happened, which means you couldn't have done it because you were genuinely confused. Mm-hmm. Also, something that was mentioned in the trial and also mentioned beforehand, Rose's sword can't shatter gems. It was pointed out in the episode with, with Bisma. It was designed specifically not to break gems. You can only poof them. It's really good at poofing. It can't actually shatter a gem. And Blue Diamond specifically said that Rose Quartz shattered Pink Diamond with her sword, which canonically is not possible unless Rose Quartz had a different sword. But she's always depicted with a sword. Even the gem's records, she's depicted with that sword. But it could be a different sword and still look the same. Hmm. That would be simple enough to do. Also, Lars is freaking awesome. <laughs> Lars had so much growth in this arc. Mm-hmm. And we get confirmation of why the dessert ended up in the trash. Mm -hmm. He did do it himself and then got kidnapped on the way back. Probably because he was talking to himself going, Lars, you idiot. And Aquamarine heard, ooh, there's a Lars, grab it. Mm-hmm. So many good things in just these four episodes. Yes, and just, I want to know more. Did Rose actually shatter Pink Diamond? Because I was willing to believe it. Because even Garnet confirmed it. When Stephen was going, my mom wouldn't do that. Garnet confirmed it. So is Garnet lying? Does Garnet truly not know any better and simply believes it? I'm thinking it's that one, especially if Rose said, yes, I did do this for some reason that we don't know about yet. She took on the responsibility of that. Yeah, and then going back to Homeworld, the diamonds are spreading misinformation about Earth. What's the point of that? Because all the off-color gems thought Earth had been fully destroyed. Mm -hmm. Or at least cleared of all valid life. So it was a wasteland, not worth going to. Because they don't want any other gems joining what's left of the crystal gems. But the only ones who have access to spaceships, it seems, are the ones who are directly serving. Because we've had ships go to Earth on missions. So there is a level at which it's known. But the common populace has been told that there's nothing left of Earth. Misinformation is the best way to keep possible rebels from coming up. Yes. Because... It had to be known, this great rebellion. I mean, too much resources went to fight it to not have some knowledge of it get back to Homeworld and trickle down. But no gem is going to leave Homeworld and go to Earth to double check, so if all the diamonds say Earth has been decimated, then Earth has been decimated and there are no more rebels. And only the higher up military and higher up diplomats, etc. know otherwise. Going back to the trial, I like how the lawyer wasn't confident until Stephen was like, yeah, um, I don't know, basically. And he goes, oh, oh, and then his brain starts kicking in. And he starts coming up with valid stuff. But she was scared before, so she wasn't th thinking straight. But the moment she got some confidence in her, she started thinking and coming up with stuff. Well, I think a trait of the Zircon, especially since they're cast in this lawyer role, is that they have to be highly analytical. Because if you look at the case that the Green Zircon presents, it's pretty well laid out. It's like, here it is, this is what I have, here's a witness that can tie back the fact that this weird looking creature is actually Rose Quartz. And the Blue Zircon is just like, I don't know what to do, I can't defend you, this sucks. I mean, technically I don't really want to defend you because of the crime you're accused of and then but don't go and confess and then listening to Stephen's testimony 
and what Stephen says both in the testimony, which by the way was not under oath, and what they say back in the room when they take the recess. Mm -hmm. Also, I hope those two Zircons are okay. Well, they both got poofed, so hopefully they didn't get shattered. Mm -hmm. Though it sounds like in gym law, if the lawyer fails and the accused is proven guilty, the lawyer is also guilty. Because the Zircon said, not only are you on the line, I am on the line. So if you say you're guilty, I get in trouble. Because it's his job to defend whoever he's assigned to. So apparently every trial is a life and death battle for the lawyers. Mm -hmm. I think it's also the fact that the other lawyer brought up the fact that you're defending a you're just telling a person that's doing treason, so you are automatically treasonous too because you are on their side. Yeah, and he's like, but I was assigned this. There's no help for it. I was ordered to do this. Therefore, it would be treason if I didn't because mm -hmm. then I would be disobeying orders. And also interesting that she specific that Zircon specifically asked for blue diamonds palaquin. Is yellow diamonds so different? Also, she was blue diamonds Zircon. So, of course, asking her diamond for permission is better than asking not her diamond for permission. Yes. And green zircon, could you be a little more of a kiss up? I mean, even yellow diamond went, the, my diamond will suffice. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. <laughs> what does that matter? You guys are extremely long lived and time has little meaning to you compared to shorter lived creatures. I mean, you've waited how long for the cluster? You're never going to get it. And I'm still waiting for those shards to do something that saves Earth beyond not becoming the cluster. Though there's the real problem of if they fuse or come out, they're kind of big. No, they're all small pieces and they yeah. bubbled each other. I, I meant if they all fuse together as an entity to help just that fusion since they're basically the core of the Earth? I don't think they'd all fuse together. I think they made smaller relationships with each other. So you'd have like five or six shards come out. I know if they all came out at once. Also, even though it was depicted as if it was an entire core of the Earth, that would be kind of a problem with how the Earth works. Yeah, so I don't think it actually is. I just think it's a large portion under the mantle. Mm -hmm. In one section. Because they need them all clustered Ha ha, need them all clustered together in order to form the cluster. So any more points you want to go over that I probably skipped over? How Stephen has this whole, I think I said this last time, that he has this whole thing where he can just turn people around and bring them together and make them change sides. It's very Tenshi Moyo, though without the harem part of it. Yeah, definitely without the harem part of it. That's kind of a Japanese trope. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a trope in... Soap operas, though. Didn't watch enough of them. I just know there's enough tropes that they all happened in one episode and it was kind of weird. Also, like the Everlasting New Year's episode or Everlasting Christmas episode. This was an entire season. How was it all in Christmas? It's a plot. Yes. And how the Thanksgiving and Christmas episodes are always lighter because nobody's watching. It's the New Year's ones where things start to pick back up and it takes like five nights to have the New Year's ball. Because there's all this double dealing and who's sleeping with whom and who murdered whom and who's plotting what and which corporate takeover is going on. Uh, and now back to your regularly scheduled program. Quite. So let's see. Good to know Eyeball was rescued. And the whole thing with those robots. Because I saw when they first scan, it's like, oh, they're scanning for gems. Lars is going to be invisible. If only he was brave enough to take advantage of that, and also only if they would realize that's what's happening. Also, I like how him just standing in front of a gem was enough to block the readings. I could, I could understand rock, because rock is also a mineral, but how does tissue... Water blocks radio waves. And what are we? Mostly water. So, yeah, that was just about the coolest thing Lars had ever done. And then just seeing that, I'm like, ooh, he's going to get hurt. Yeah, I love how he even says that. It's like, that was like the coolest thing I've ever done. Pretty much. And then he does more of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love how they do the whole thing where usually heroes survive riding on top of something and exploding. I'm like, this world plays better physics than that. That's going to hurt him. 
how much. Yes, and the gyms aren't going to understand at first because he's still in one piece. And they think under gym rules. Mm -hmm. Where as long as you're not poofed, you're fine. Or your gym isn't cracked. Yes. They've had all of two seconds of exposure to humans. They have no clue how it works. And then for Steven not to be thinking about healing, I'm like, Steven, healing, spit, <laughs> tear, you're, you're crying. Let the tears touch him. Give him mouth to mouth something. Also, that reminds me of that wonderful gem. Something miraculous is going to happen. <laughs> the thing that gets me is she knows that her timing's off, yet she continues to say it. That was the part that got me. I find her cute, though. Oh, she was cute, and an interesting off-color, because while sapphires do come in many colors, it seems that the sapphires in the Steven Universe universe are blue. But she wasn't quite the right color for a sapphire of another shade. Hmm. Those sapphires do come in a lot of colors, including ruby, which is just a red sapphire. Mm-hmm. Though you gotta remember, that area was kind of dark, so we may not be seeing their true colors. I didn't mean to phrase it that way, but it works. Mm-hmm. But everyone except the six-way fusion seemed to be in that same color family. Hmm. And if it was all from the lighting, you would have thought that the six-way fusion would have also looked closer to that shade. Hmm. Well, lighting can do strange things to colors. I should know. I've recently seen an image where it basically has the same image on both sides, but in different colors. But you select one section and drag it over to the other section, and there are the exact same colors. The only thing that's different is the background color. Yeah, so perception. Mm-hmm. So let's see. The spaceship, the trial, the off-color gems, the trip home. I just... I can't believe Steven took that long at home. It's like, I would have gone back instantly and told everyone else and then gone back again and gotten the food and water. And that brings up something else I found interesting about Lars now being a lion, as it were. Oh, that actually kind of works. Think about that. The fact that he bows to Steven. Yes. At the end, it was very much a knightly bow. It wasn't just leaning over. It was an actual bow. Mm-hmm. I believe you were starting to go somewhere else before that hit you. Maybe, but I've forgotten it now. <sighs> well, ideas have tendency to push other ideas out in my head. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what I was talking about? I might remember it. You were talking about how Lars as a lion works. Uh, no, I was finished with that idea. Oh. You cut over so quickly, it sounded like you weren't done with that thought. Yeah, what happened is, like, oh, Lars is a lion. That works. And then my brain went... But he bows. Oh, yeah, he bows. Yeah, well, I thought you had more to go with to support. Oh, yeah, Lars as a lion works. I thought you had, like, some support for that. Oh, he's now a lion. He's now brave. He's he's matching lion, not just because of the fact that he is. But he went and did something brave. Mm-hmm. Which might be why the healing tears affected him in that way. Mm. It might have been because of his nature. The fact that he sacrificed himself to protect others yes and that he went and did something brave and heroic at risk to himself because think of the other people that Stephen has healed amethyst hurt herself goofing off connie's eyes they weren't doing anything they were just sharing juice eyeball got hit by an asteroid meteor asteroid whatever the right one is for it being in space lapis we don't know how lapis was injured but she wasn't doing anything active at the time Stephen tried to heal her. Also, Greg's injured leg. So even with the various healings, even though they took place under different circumstances, no one was injured defending others. It might also be the emotions Stephen is feeling at the time. Because pretty much all of Stephen's powers are powered by his emotions. Ah, oh, so Steven is Super Princess Peach. <laughs> I never thought of it way. Thank you for that wonderful image. He actually looks smashing in that dress. Well, we, we've seen him do it pretty well in the talent show. Also, that always bugged me about that game. It's like she finally gets her own game and it's all about her being emotional. Well, they're very powerful emotions. Yes. 
Gaijin Guma has a good theory video on that that makes it less painful. Go check that out after you're done here. Yep, that's a good idea. Speaking of being done, how close are we? Well, I was trying to trace back over everything to make sure we'd hit most of the salient points that I wanted to touch on. So it was all the way up to healing Lars, getting back to Earth. Yeah, because I would have jumped back much sooner than Steven. Also, I love that the first thing he was like, water. Like, yes. And then I thought for the comedic effect, water, then bathroom, then food. But no, water, food, and then, ooh, I have to get back. I have to tell the others. I can't tell the others. There are no pins in this place. You can't write it in peanut butter on the counter. Steven was here. It just grab a thing of chocolate sauce and write it out on the counter. It just that part truly made zero sense to me. Hmm. And then, yes, it was awesome that you took stuff back, but I'm like, hmm, maybe you should have grabbed, I don't know, maybe some more weapons? Hmm. That's an idea. Mm-hmm. And I love it, trying to pull Lars through. It's like, if that did work, then kind of would have been an implosion, I think. And then all the off-color gems would have been stuck because Lars was the portal and you just pulled him through the portal. So that brings me another point that I thought of. Can Lars now create portals? The same way that Lion can? Interesting question. And that's another thing, is if they took all the gems back, then would Lion have been able to create enough portals to get all the way to Homeworld? Because it seemed to tire Lion out a great deal just to get as far as the moon. Hmm. So could Lion have taken them all the way to Homeworld? Hmm. And with Lars being so new to being whatever he is, could he have even made it two feet? Probably not. But the thing is, with Lars and Lion, they have a connection between the two worlds, which means they could bring resources back and forth. So they could have taken the gems, the off-color gems, one at a time, still leaving someone with Lars to help him and help protect him while they work across planets together to figure out a way to get everyone home. I just wish Lars had more hair on the top of his head. Yeah, well, he's probably going to let it grow out now, because that, that six-way definitely would have had to defuse. That's probably another reason that she said they'd stay, because I don't think she's defused at all. But the thing is, now that Steven's back, he can take everyone else, they can travel through Lion to get back to Lars, and hopefully come up with a plan, because the Crystal Gems can pass on Homeworld. Except for Garnet, she has to defuse. But they can pass on Homeworld. Because that was the thing, I figured when he got back with Lion, the first thing he could do is grab the others and drag them back through so that they had more people to help. But that's what he can do now. Mm -hmm, especially since the episode ends right there. Mm -hmm. I don't know when the next episodes will be out, because the wiki said to be determined. Well, we'll survive. I'm sure we have plenty of other things we still have to watch. Stay tuned, Sasami-chan. <laughs> and this has been our thoughts in this heat on Stephen Universe, Season 5, Episodes 1 through 4. I'm going to turn on some air conditioning. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, which I'm hoping you did since you're actually all the way to the outro, uh, please like, share, subscribe, comment. Check out other videos. Uh, we put up usually two a week. Saturdays are pop culture and on Wednesdays, going back to your childhood with Ember's Reading Room, children's books from an adult perspective. If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on Tumblr, DeviantArt, Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. If you would like to and are able to help support us financially, we have both Patreon and Ko-fi. Patreon starts at a dollar and Kofi at three. Yes, I know Patreon's recurring, but you can always cancel at any time. If you can only give us a dollar, we're still grateful.